Hey again guys and welcome back. Today I wanted to take a look at these guys. These are these little like joystick modules that you can get on eBay probably for about a buck maybe a buck fifty a piece and these things are a great way to add control to your robotics or remote control projects. They do look a little daunting at first because you know you have ground five volts Let's see if I can even show you that. So you have ground, 5 volts, uh, VRX, VRY, and SW. So it does seem quite confusing because there's a lot of stuff going on here. But I'll tell you that inside of this is just a clever mechanism to hold this, which is a little tactile switch, and these two which are potentiometers. Now, they're not this big, but the tactile switch is actually this one here. So if we take a look at how the mechanism works, you can tell that this here has a little center white part, and it has an outer sort of brown part that kind of looks like the brown on this. And if you can see down there, there are three pins. I can even point to you on the bottom here, one, two, and three. So all this is is a potentiometer without a knob. Instead, this joystick is interfaced to it directly. And so if I flip the joystick this way, you'll see that it doesn't move at all. So it's not handling this axis. If I flip it this way though, you can tell that the inner white part moves with the joystick. And if I flip that around, you'll see the identical thing here. And if I go this way, which is what was making this one move, uh, this one here does not move. And if I go this way, it does. And so it's just basically two potentiometers. One is handling the X direction, the other one is handling the Y. And if I get both of them in shot, going diagonally will actually move both of them. So it's the mix of those two uh, potentiometers that will give you your positional direct your your eight directions really or more because it'll be variable. Now we know that a potentiometer we need to put voltage like a positive voltage on one side and a ground on the other and then we'll read the 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 uh, wiper pin because that'll be dividing the voltage because it's going along a resistive track. But if both our potentiometers need the same 5 volts and ground, then we only really need one 5 volt input, which will be divided into both of these and one ground. So immediately you remove, you have, this is a three pin device, that's a three pin device, but to run them, you only really need four pins, positive, negative, and the two sense pins, the two voltage dividing pins. So that is pretty good in and of itself. Now for the switch though, again, this is just a clever mechanism to house simple components. If I press down on this here, you see the whole shaft sort of moves down and presses on this little switch. And if you look at the footprint on, on the bottom, those four solder pads, they look exactly like these four solder pads and the switch because you already have five volts and ground in for the potentiometers the switch can just connect the five volts to ground and it's just that simple you need five volts ground you need a sense pin or well it's a, it's a voltage divided voltage for x one four y and then you need another pin for your switch so one two three four five pins but doing three separate things so that's pretty cool let me hook this up to a power supply and we can take a look at what's going on in here so here's the little test setup we have I have five volts going into the five volt in on this breadboard here and I have the uh, maroon and the gray doing the five volts and ground across. Then we have uh, VRX, we have VRY, and 
RSW. So I will just ground the multimeter because all the voltage values we're going to get are going to be referenced to ground. Uh, so was that on the correct one? It was. Perfect. Now, if we check the voltage between uh, 5 volts and ground, we're just going to see 5 volts. If we check the voltage between VRX and ground, um, I'm expecting, because this mechanism holds the, the joystick in a center position, the center of a potentiometer should have equal resistance on both sides of the wiper and give us a voltage of roughly 2.5 volts, roughly half the supply voltage. So if I head over to voltage here, and there we go, 2.48. And now to determine which is X and Y, we don't know which pot does what. So we'll just hold this down and we'll go in a direction. So going up and down relative to the camera doesn't change anything, but going side to side, boom, down to zero and up to five. So it goes all the way down to ground and all the way up to the voltage rail. And if we swap this for the other direction, VRY, okay, going up and down with respect to the camera, see center is roughly five volts. There we go, uh, roughly two and a half, I should say. It goes right up to five and right down to ground. So it's this division of voltage that can be read by, let's say, an Arduino. And then we can translate that to other stuff. Then on here, we have the switch pin. And the switch pin gives us absolutely nothing. And it gives us nothing because the switch is open. But when the switch is open, I'm pretty sure this will connect it to 5 volts. So it'll go from a logic level low to a logic level high. So let's press down, see what we get. Nope, it definitely doesn't. Okay, so that is because the switch is being handled a different way. So let's see if we can check continuity then between the switch pin and ground, because that could be also how it is switching it. So continuity over here. And we've got it here. So no continuity. If I press down, continuity. So what it's doing is actually it's an open connection between the SW pin and ground. And when you press down, it shorts it. It closes the switch. So let's see if we can read this on our Arduino and control something simple like an LED. So here we are at the computer looking at the Arduino code. Now this code took me way longer than it should have to um, write and that's simply because I had a mistake which is now corrected uh, thanks to two users on the Arduino subreddit. One is Henlo Uwu and the other one is Gypsum Fanatic 25 so thanks guys for your help. They responded within two minutes or three minutes of each other. And then a little bit later, um, another user, Podcake, also came and helped out with the answer. So because of these guys, I'm able to finish this video on time. So thanks to all three of you. So basically here, since we're reading two potentiometers, there'll be two things that are very similar. And then we're reading a switch, so then that will be on its own. So basically, everything that happens with X will have to do with Y. So I can just explain a little bit of this code. So first of all, we need to set a variable to store the red X value. And same thing to store the red Y value. We also need to store the red uh, switch value. So, you know, we need to read uh, two analog signals, one digital. So here's the analog, analog. This one is digital. Then we have to set a pin to be read from. So I picked A1 and A2 kind of arbitrarily. As long as it's an analog pin, you can read from it. And also reading from a digital pin for the switch pin. Also, we have to output it to somewhere. So I have to define some pins to go out. As long as the pins are PWM capable, we can do analog write to it. So I picked 9 and 10 kind of arbitrarily. 
And then we also need a digital pin to set the output based on the switch position. And so I picked pin seven again, pretty arbitrarily. So that's it for before the setup. During the setup now, I set my pin modes. Now theoretically, um, the Arduino reference says you don't have to um, set the uh, output on a analog right, or was it an input on the analog read? It doesn't matter. I put it in just because it makes me feel better. So I'm going to make our analog pins um, inputs, and I'm going to make my um, digital read pin an input, and then my out pins. Um, these guys will be outputs. This will be on the PWM pins, and then the switch output. So that's pretty simple. In the void loop, and I can actually remove, uh, you know what, I'll leave it there. So what happens here is that our value will be equal to the analog value read on the X pin. That'll give us a number between uh, 0 and 1023. And then I'm going to delay 15 seconds, uh, milliseconds, sorry, not seconds. And then read the other analog read uh, for the Y pin. And then I'm just going to add another delay just in case, because uh, along this Arduino kind of journey, I've been told that uh, reading can sometimes cause problems if you do it too fast. And then I'm just going to write out the values onto our write pins. And since our number is between 0 and 1023, but we can only output between 0 and 255, we're going to divide the value by 4 as per the Arduino reference. And for the switch, it's a digital read and then a digital write, so it'll write high or low. And it's that simple. So we just need to upload this and then I'll show you the little circuit I built to test this. This may seem a little complex, but it truly isn't. Basically, on the pot here, I've got 5 volt coming from this power supply module. The red and black wires run to the 5 volt and ground on the Arduino and 5 volt and ground on this uh, joystick module. And then we have our individual wires here. So the X is white and the Y is yellow. And those are going to A1 and A2 uh, individually. Then we have the switch which is coming through this orange to the breadboard and up to pin 12. Now the switch is just continuity if you remember. So it's either open or um, continuity to ground and that doesn't help us because the open will be floating and the continuity to ground will be a low. So what I did is I put a, I think this is a 10k or 100k resistor to pull up the everything, the, the sense pin here to 5 volts. So when I press this, then it'll go low because it'll pull down to ground. And so this, the, the LED is going to be flipped. So it's going to be on when it's not pressed. And when you press it, the LED will turn off. Don't worry about it. It's legit. So it goes to pin 12 there. Then I tied the grounds together with this brown wire here. So that's all that this wire is doing, just feeding ground. I've got three LEDs. One is X, Y, and switch. Don't forget switch is inversed. When you click this, it'll turn off. And then I have pins uh, 9 and 10, the PWM pins, going from uh, the Arduino to X, the Arduino to Y, and then the output uh, digital pin 7 to this light here. So basically it's sampling what this board is doing and it'll represent it visually with these LEDs. And so when I plug this in, it should all work. Here's hoping. Okay, so first of all, all the lights are on. So you may think I've already failed, but I have not. Let's try the switch. Yeah, when I click down the switch, the LED turns off. So that one is working. Now, I believe X is this way, and this LED. So what happens if I roll it this way? Oh, look at that. It gets dimmer and dimmer until it turns off. What if I roll it the other way? Yeah, it gets brighter and brighter. It may not be super obvious on the camera, but 
it looks pretty smooth to my eye, which is pretty nice. Let's try the Y axis. It's this way. Yep. So it goes dim this way and bright this way. And in the middle, it's sort of like a middle value. And then we have them working all at once. And you can tell that the lights will change their brightness based on where this thing is. And you can run both of these axes and the switch at the same time. And I believe we do have enough um, analog read and we do have enough PWM pins that we can actually put two of these on an Arduino Uno and control something with like two sticks like a modern console. But this is right now very much functional. And one thing I just want to show you is that if, yeah, these will be freaking out because the inputs are now not, uh, they're not grounded or anything. If you're having issues getting the full range of motion, if you look, see how far this thing goes, this one here, you may have to cut out a little bit of the skirt like I did here to get around that micro switch there. Some models it seems to clip, other models it doesn't. But yeah, this is it for our experiment today. I want to thank those Reddit users one more time because uh, they really pulled my butt out of the fire. I was under pressure to finish these uh, videos and it wasn't happening without their help. So I'm really thankful for their help. I'm also really thankful for um, my community, my viewers. You guys are the reason that I had to push to make a video. So I keep on track to do one video per day for the entire month of January. And for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching. And let me know if you've learned something new down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching.